Okay, so quick intro for me, a little bit of background. I've been working with PDM and PLM for about 12 years. I know I've met and worked with several of you on the call, actually. Um, so it's good to be here. I'm really excited to show you Exalead today. Um, I think you'll find it's a, a really nice tool and can be very valuable to your organization. So um, most of my background really has been with the PLM systems, uh, specifically the DSO systems technology. Okay, and just a quick background. I think most of you are familiar with Inceptra, uh, but perhaps not all. So we have been around quite a long time and provide a lot of different types of services around the CAD CAM and PLM industry. Things such as consulting, training, uh, automation. Uh, we have a, a full-time support desk staff. And really, our main objective is to help our customers improve their business. Um, so we use our tools and, and expertise to help with that. We are the largest DSO partner in North America, and we have a large and growing, actually, team of engineers throughout the country. <clears throat> okay, so on our agenda, I'm going to go through a few slides. We'll do an overview of Exalead one part, in case that's something you're not uh, too familiar with yet. Then I'll jump in to the live demonstration, so you can actually see what this looks like, what the interface looks like. And we'll go through a sample scenario that I'll introduce in a bit. Um, and then we'll have some time for some Q&A afterwards, and we should get you wrapped up uh, just in time. Okay, so I wanted, actually wanted to start off with a poll. So we'll see how this uh, works. So I've opened a poll in the meeting. And really the question is, since we're focused on the reuse of parts, really, with Exalead, and how you can better find your data. Just curious to see how you currently locate your data. So if you have an existing PDM system, uh, of course, the, the local file system, you, know, you ask an administrator, doc control, to find that for you. Um, or you know, perhaps there's some other system I, I missed here in my answer. So I'll just give you a minute to finish that up. Um, thanks for participating. It's good to see kind of where everyone's coming from before we start. So, so far, uh, looks like about half use a current PDM or PLM system. Um, you know, a big chunk of that is file system, which is pretty common. That's typically what we find. Um, if you don't have a PDM system in place, that's really the way it's traditionally done is searching through a file system. Okay, so I'm going to close that one, and then one more, just a quick one, just to get an idea, since we are going to show the smart team integration. There are integrations from one part to other systems, uh, but just wanted to get an idea of how many of you are using smart team now. So I'll give just a minute to go over that one. Alrighty, okay, good. Yeah, so definitely a lot of smart team users out there. It's good to see this is perfect, perfect session for you. Okay, so I'm just going to close that poll. Thanks for doing that. Just wanted to get a little bit of feedback. So now we'll jump right into our Exalead one part introduction. And so one of the biggest issues we can really address with one part is the, the cost of creating new parts. So basically finding existing data and reusing that data to avoid creating new parts when it's not really necessary. So depending on complexity, of course, the cost of creating a new part can be pretty high, right? And then as you do create duplicate parts, if that does happen, um, there are a lot of other areas that really affects. We start getting into uh, additional stock 
that may not be needed, additional tooling, manufacturing, right? It kind of, uh, kind of like a domino effect, right, when you create that new part to get started. So really what we have is a tool that's going to allow you to search and reuse those existing parts and any related information as well. We're not just talking about CAD data in this case uh, to help you lower costs essentially, right? avoid creating so many duplicate parts and that's really the goal. Okay. <clears throat> so currently when you want to find data, and we did this poll, what you do is you search a PDM system, about half of that responded said that's what they do now. And of course, PDM systems have their own interfaces and their quirks and their ways of searching. Um, you know, may, may have somewhat of a limited user base. And then of course, you have the file structure, which it sounds like several of you use as well. You know, that, that can work okay, but also you're somewhat limited especially when you're looking at relationships and where used type of information. So it's, I mean, it's a fact that people spend a lot of time searching for data, um, just going into systems and, and doing searches and tweaking the searches and trying to narrow that down. Now, particularly, it can be tough with larger assemblies or maybe standard part libraries, right, finding the data that you really need, finding the correct standard parts. You know, plenty of times we've seen, even in the PDM system, duplicate standard parts. Right? So the, the same standard part, but many times um, that have been created because someone didn't reuse the existing one. So it can be a tough task. And all the time spent searching is really time you're not doing something more productive. Uh, that could be designing, innovating, uh, right, really doing something that's going to add more value to the business. So without a really efficient tool that can allow you to find and compare that data, um, you're really stuck just searching. Um, and then at that point, if you can't find anything, doesn't mean it doesn't exist, just that you weren't able to find it in the short amount of time then that leads to recreating that part. And so these are these types of comments are the things we hear really all the time. Um, you know, we have this bottomless abyss of files and documents, especially when we're talking about multiple systems, right? So we have uh, the file system and a PDM or PLM system and SharePoint and maybe another PLM system, right? So there's you know, a lot of data sources, a lot of systems out there. Sometimes, you know, some of you probably have found if you didn't create it, then you can't find it, right? You, maybe it's stored in a certain spot or, or you know the right criteria to search for and other people might not know what that criteria is. You, then you get into asking other people to find things for you. Of course, that's you know, that can take a lot of time, and then you're waiting on someone else to do that research and, and hoping that they can find the part that you need as well. So, you know, in the end, the kind of the theme is that that takes a lot of time, and you are incurring costs um, when you can't find that data, and then you need to start creating new parts. That means new, new procedures, quality control, stocking parts, right? Again, that whole domino effect of everything that comes after that. It's much easier if you can just find the part and reuse it. Okay. So what you really end up with is engineers and designers are making these critical decisions that can introduce these costs. So, you know, their engineers and designers are the one kind of on the front line looking for this data. And if they can't find it, they're making the decision to create a new part, right, in a lot of cases. And so as we've talked about, the downstream effect of that um, is high, right? Cost can be high. <clears throat> and, you know, really more and more parts 
are just being created. So every time a new project is created, you, you get this wave of new parts that are being created when maybe some of those can be reused more efficiently. <clears throat> so as we've touched on a little bit, the cost can be very high when it does come to creating new parts. So, you know, some of these factors are that, of course, a new design is going to take more time. You have to go through your, your design process, engineering process, release processes, right? There's a lot that's involved outside of just opening the CAD system and, and designing that part. Um, of course, that can affect other things. So things like time to market, right? If you're trying to get a new product out, Obviously, it's going to be created or faster if you can reuse some of your existing data instead of recreate existing data. And of course, everything out there that's existing is your IP. I mean, that's kind of the, the bread and butter of most companies. So if you're not able, able to leverage that, um, you know, it's just going to slow you down really um, in the short term and, and definitely in the long run as well. We talked about engineers, designers, making these decisions and having to spend this time searching. So really, these are high value resources that shouldn't really be spending time digging through files, you know, folders, and trying to compare data um, when they could be doing other more productive tasks. <clears throat> so some research that has been done, and you know, even just from um, from visiting companies, and you know, probably from your own experience, um, you may have found that a lot of the work done. Of course, this depends on your products and, and your processes, but a lot of the work done by engineering is very similar to what was done in the past. That doesn't mean it's it's exactly the same. But typically, there are things you can reuse if you only knew that they existed um, to start maybe a new design okay, or a new, new part creation. Okay, so now what, with one part, really we're asking this question, what if we can make it much easier to find that similar data? So not only design data and parts, uh, but as well as additional information that can help you make that decision that you can reuse a part. And so that's where one part comes in. And really what one part does is bring together a lot of information in an easy to use, uh, fast interface. And I'll show you in the demo so you can actually see see that um, and really see how it works and see how the filtering works. But what this is going to let you do is really accelerate the reuse of your part designs, uh, specs, even analysis data. Right? This is this is going to search all your information, uh, not just your your three D models or things that you might have in your PDM system. Okay. So what we can do is now bring in data from other sources. So not only your CAD data, your smart team data, we can bring in simulation information. We can bring in information from your ERP system okay, and essentially mash that all up into one interface. So as a user, you can go in, search for a part number, and not only see the CAD or what's in your PDM system, but also see other related information okay, that spans different areas. Okay, the value of that information is that then you can go in and you have all the ammo you need to determine if you can reuse a part. Right? If you just have a part number, maybe that's not enough. Okay, but if you have the related information and specs and analysis information, um, 
you know, that's going to tell you, yeah, I can definitely reuse this part. <clears throat> so the approach, you know, it really is is pretty simple. And the idea is that we want to quickly locate our existing designs and important related documentation or information before we create a new one. Right? So that means the system has to be easy to use. It has to be available to anyone who needs it. And it has to give you the results you need quickly. Um, you know, not a convoluted process that you have to go through to find the parts that you might want to reuse. So that's the whole idea, is that this is something that can be done quickly. And you can see from the little chart, of course, creating a new part, that time can vary. But it's definitely going to take longer than doing a quick search in Exalead, which might take about a minute um, to give you your decision. Okay, so it's really, it's, it's not something that's going to take a lot of time due to the way the information is presented to you, uh, but it will add a lot of value if you do find a part that you can reuse. Okay, and you can avoid creating that new part and as well as, as you can see, prototyping, testing, production, you know, stocking the part, et cetera. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so now we're going to get into our demo scenario. Okay, so what I'm going to walk through in the live demo is, is kind of this scenario. Maybe we get an email that's telling us, OK, we need to create a new clamp is what I'm going to use for, for this demo. Um, you know, go, go do this. So the question we'll ask ourselves is, of course, do I need to create a new clamp, or can I just find an existing one? So what we'll do is we'll log in to Exalead. We'll discover if it does exist. And we have a lot of different filtering options we can go through. And I'll show you uh, some of those, more than I can show you in, the one, you know, in this one webinar. But I'll give you a flavor of what, what you can do there. Once we discover we have some options, we can then shortlist those designs. And we have some pretty cool comparison tools available that's going to let us see the differences between these designs. Again, it's not just a matter of finding a certain part number that looks similar. right? It's a matter of finding the one that's the most similar or exactly the same as what we need, as well as ensuring it's it's in the right CAD system. Maybe we already have stock. Uh, maybe the cost is lower. Right? So it's, we're taking into account a lot of different types of information before we decide. And then at the end, then we can decide, yeah, OK, this is the one we do want to reuse. Okay, this, is, this is the part. And this is very similar, or it's exactly the same as what I need for this new project. Okay, so that's going to be a little bit of our scenario after we do that, we'll actually look at how we can tie into Smart Team as well. That'll be the second part of that demo. OK, so now I am showing the Exalead screen. And I'm going to go ahead and log in here. OK, so back to our scenario. We were talking about a clamp that we wanted to view. And so the first thing we want to do is search for that. So it's this Google-like interface where basically when we are running a search here, this is a global search across every, every source we're looking at. And so remember, we talked about smart team uh, file-based systems we can index. ERP system. Okay, this is going to search basically across anything we've indexed. And you can see here that it will also do these predictive results, so based on things that it's already indexed. Okay, so really, as much
much or as little as you know you can search for in here, um, as well as you can really narrow that down. So if you know the material, the author, the source, um, you know, a lot of search options. So of course, I'm not going to go through every single scenario we have, but let's just say we want to look for a, a steel or an alloy clamp in this case. Okay. So we'll just run our global search, and this is going to give us our results. Okay, we'll look at our filtering. You can see some filter options over on the left side. We'll look at those in a little bit, but in this case, I want to just look at some clamps. Okay, so we'll just start digging essentially now, right? This is our process of trying to narrow down these parts and determine what one we want to use. Okay, so this is a V5 part. I can see when it was created, and I'm going to just dig into this one here a little bit and look at it. Okay. <clears throat> so over here we can see our different attributes. Okay, these attributes can come from the actual model. Okay, so your CATIA part, your CATIA product, your SOLIDWORKS, your PROE data. So this does support multi-CAD indexing. Okay, so these attributes can be read directly from that. We can also read directly from your other system. So let's say smart team Maybe we're storing different types of attributes. Okay, we can bring those in. And then we also talked about even ERP attributes. Okay, so essentially, we're pulling information from CATIA directly, from the smart team system, and from the ERP system, and putting it all on one screen. Okay, and we can combine that information. I don't know what that, but um, basically, you can see your thumbnail here. Yeah, this is going to at least give you a quick visual clue, right? That's obviously important when it comes to our design and our 3D information, um, our CAD information as to what it looks like. Okay, so as a designer, engineer, person looking to reuse a part, this might be enough to tell you, okay, I can reuse this part. If it's not enough, of course, you can keep digging, and there's a lot more we can do here. So this one, you know, one of the one of the coolest things about this tool um, is the 3D similarity. So we can see visually these all look pretty much the same. But what we want to do is come in and compare these. So we're just going to select some of these. And then now we can go and compare these and really take a look at the differences. Right? This is not something we can tell with our, our naked eye as to what what differences these are. But with Exalead, we can come in and see this, this red text basically means the differences. <clears throat> we can see all the attributes. So some of these are coming from Smart Team, some from EPDM. And we can see these happen to be cat parts and a step file. Again, our results, depending on what we compare, we could have SOLIDWORKS, um, you know, NX data, right, any, any types of information we can index in here. Of course, things like descriptions, the tag is important, so you can tag different types of data, and this, even the tagging can be done all automatically as you index this information. Okay, so we can see work in progress, obsolete, we can see what our master file is, you know, maybe that's the one we want to work with if we're going to reuse this since it's the master. In addition, some important attributes might be things like price, right? So we're taking into account a lot of factors, not only the similarity of the part, of course that's a big one, but also how much does this cost? And how much stock do we have of this part? Right, that's, that's definitely gonna dictate what you want to reuse. If you wanna reuse a part or redesign um, as well. And then, of course, how similar is it? Okay, and there are a lot of criteria we can do to define um, how we want these to show up. But those are some of the basics. So, again, now maybe you would have enough to determine, okay, I definitely want to reuse this one based on the cost of the part, which came from our ERP system, and the quantity we have in stock, which also came from our ERP system. So 
So we're not just looking at a part number to determine that information. Okay. And then, of course, we can keep digging. And we can look at things like parents, so your parent-child relationship, the, the all-important where used, right? Where is this clamp actually used now? And we can see that information. And we can, of course, keep drilling up. I'm not going to go all the way up the tree, but you can see how we can drill up or drill down to see the different children. And we can also look at things like related documents. This is where I kind of mentioned it in the PowerPoint. But we're not just looking at a 3D model. Of course, that's valuable to do some similar searches and see what we have out there. But we also looked at things like cost and quantity from other systems. We can then come in and look at maybe some different types of bill material um, tables. We can look at the analysis results that were previously run on this. And the system is automatically associating these documents together, these related documents, okay, based on any number of criteria that you define. Things like part number and description, for example. Like that's how you know these are similar. Even as far as showing you um, simulation input files okay, that you can get from here. You can download these, you know, any information directly from here as well. So saving from my browser. Okay, so you can see we're kind of building up a lot of information about this part that we certainly wouldn't have if we just opened it on, on our Windows network. Right? We wouldn't have this type of information available. When it does come to importing data from another system like Smart Team or ERP system, um, you, know, you can choose what you want to bring in here as well. We're showing a lot of information here. Okay, but you can choose that and you can narrow that down as much as you really need to. Okay. So as far as our scenario goes, we're, we're kind of done with the scenario um, initially. So we, we got a request to design a clamp. And we came in here, we did some research, we narrowed it down, did a comparison, found out what one we have in stock, and you know, basically we're done at that point. I want to show you still though, which you know, it's just additional tools you can keep using if you need them, um, some other views of data and some other ways you can narrow down data as well. Okay, so that was one way of doing it. And we can see we have our selections here, so you can select and compare everything you want. And now what I'm going to do is, I don't know, in this case I'm just going to run a global search for everything in the system. Okay, you can see this index we're looking at is actually almost 13,000 records. Now, it's not really that large, but you can see how quick the speed is. I just searched, did a global search for every record. And you know the system is certainly speedy. Um, the way it's indexed uh, to locate and really narrow this down um, as quickly as you need to. Okay. So as far as other filtering options, and this, these are really just more features just to show you what you can do, is you can sort and filter by things like, of course, your creation and modification date, okay, who created this information, file type information, all of this really comes down to, as the designer or engineer, what, what do you know? Right? What do you want to search for? You might not care if it's a CATIA part or a SOLIDWORKS part, so you're not going to necessarily narrow that down. Or maybe you pick both of those. So really, you can use as many criteria as you want. Even things like the color, right? Sometimes those colors mean, uh, mean different things, materials. <clears throat> um, or other attributes. Of course, your source system, where did it come from? Okay, maybe you only want to see data from Smart Team. Okay, you're not concerned about data from any other system. To do that, 
it's as simple as just clicking, and now we've just narrowed down everything that's, that's indexed from our smart team system. Okay. And there are more, so uh, right, materials, even mechanical features, sizes, volume. Okay, so I mean, there's, you can see there's a lot of stuff here. Uh, really, anything you can think of as far as a way to narrow down data is going to be is going to be somewhere in here. Okay, you can even drag. So if you notice, oh, there's, you know, there's a lot of activity right around this time frame. I can even start drilling down into there to see what was created, and then I can start narrowing down as well. So this is just standard XLE. This is the searching capability and the filtering capability uh, that you have. Okay. And then the last thing I want to show you in here before I switch over and talk a little bit about the smart team integration portion is some of the analytics tools. Okay. So I'm looking right now at all of my data. And you may want, as another way to browse through data, to look at it through this analytics view. Okay, this is pretty cool. This is actually going to show us different graphs and charts for everything in our system. Of course, you can narrow this down. You don't need to look at everything. Um, I'm just showing it to you so you can see a lot of data in here. And then you can come in here and start drilling down. So I only want to look at things after 2009. Okay, and I'm going to start digging into this data to locate um, any information I need. Again, maybe we want to look at things like Tia parts. And we're going to start drilling this down. So again, to kind of sound like a, a broken record, you know what, what criteria you have for determining a part to reuse. Maybe it's the same CAD system. Maybe it's the cost. So depending on that information and what you want to find, you can come in and really narrow down any way you want to, even you know time frame. Or if you, if you know you created it, you can also start narrowing that down. Okay. So you know, I'm not going to go through and click on every single one of these, but you can you can really see how you can go in and uh, narrow down these vast amounts of data. So we started with what 12 thousand something like that and now we got down to seven based on when it was created Katia parts and smart team that are released right that's that's pretty pretty cool uh, pretty cool stuff and really powerful I mean, it, it looks simple but we're really going through these huge amounts of data to narrow that down okay, pretty quickly okay so this what I've shown you so far this server is actually in France, um, so you can see the speeds I've been getting. I'm just on a home Wi-Fi connection, so I don't know. I think that's pretty impressive of myself uh, to be able to go through the, those amounts of data and view those amounts of data um, across the network like that is uh, on a server in France. What I'm going to do now is switch over because I do have Smart Team running locally on my machine. So now I want to just switch over and show you that. So I've switched over to my machine. I have Smart Team installed locally. Now I'm going to log in to one part. And this designer user that I'm logging in with is actually a Smart Team user. So we're using the, uh, the Smart Team authentication to actually log in to one part. So this is going out to our smart team system to do that check. And there are some other forms of authentication that are accepted. So it should work with whatever you're currently using. And this one part interface will look very similar to what we've already seen before. Only difference really is that this data is coming from smart team. So this has been indexed from smart team. So we'll run our search here to at least locate some data, start narrowing it down. And notice how we get our predictive results based on what's already indexed. So that might help you determine what you want to look at and how you want to narrow down. In this case, we want to search by material. And we know we're looking for a cover made of steel. So 
So here's our initial results list. Of course, we can filter, as we saw a little bit earlier, down the left side by all these different criteria. In this case, here's a CATIA part. I know that's what I'm looking for. So we can go ahead and click in here and really start investigating to see if this is the one I want to reuse or if I can reuse this. <clears throat> So some of these attributes are coming from CATIA directly. So as the part is indexed, you'll get things like definition, nomenclature. These are CATIA standard attributes, as well as things like the color of the part, as well as some attributes coming from Smart Team. And if I scroll down, you'll really see a lot of the different attributes in Smart Team. Things like previous revision, maybe the smart team ID number. Okay, all those different attributes are included in your index. We can also see parent-child relationship information or the 3D similarity feature that we were looking at. We can do our comparisons here as well. Also, one thing to notice is this revision. So the way I've set up this system right now to index is to only index the latest revision from Smart Team. And that's really your choice. You can choose all revisions or latest revision. Typically for the bulk of users, you want them to always see the latest. So that's why we set that up that way. So with a click of a button, Open and Source is going to take us directly to this object in our Smart Team environment. So you only need to locate the data one time, and that's what where Exalead really comes in and helps you narrow down that data and that information. And then it's going to take you directly to Smart Team to perform some action on that data. And in Smart Team, you may have additional information as well that hasn't been indexed that you may not want to be indexed. Uh, maybe additional information about notes or certain attributes that are only important to the users that are dealing with the data directly in Smart Team, as well as maybe you have additional uh, information linked to this, like change processes that you may want to view. Okay, so on that note, some things you may want to do now that you're in Smart Team is initiate a change process. Maybe we want to initiate an ECR since we've discovered this part. It is very similar, but we also know that maybe this needs some changes to be made. So we can directly from here initiate our electronic change process. I'm not going to actually complete this. This is standard Smart Team functionality. But just want to show you how <clears throat> we can kick off those types of actions directly from our Smart Team system. The other option might be that you just want to modify this data. So it's not released in this case. We have our state information here. This is checked in to Smart Team. Maybe we want to just go in and actually copy this file out so we can modify it. Okay, and we can do that directly through the system here. This is going to be copied directly to my computer so I can work on this now. And nice thing about using this web interface is that if that was a product or an assembly, all of the components would be copied out as well. Or if there were any additional links, those would be copied out also. Things like drawing links or any special CATIA links. Okay, since we're using the web product, all of that is covered. Now we have this part open in CATIA. So this is probably the workflow you'd use if you were a CATIA and Smart Team user. And now from here, I can actually check this out directly. Okay, so I found it with Exalead. I've opened it in the CATIA. And now if I want to modify that, I can check that out. And in here, we can come in and make uh, whatever changes we need to make. Okay, and then when you're done, similar process. And really, this is standard Smart Team functionality. This is not. Exalead, really Exalead is just giving us a way to locate this data and to find this data. Okay, and now we have a new revision in the system. 
if you index this data again, this would be the latest version that would now show up in XLEAD. All right, so that ends the live demonstration portion of the presentation. So to kind of show a little bit of a uh, wrap up here, what, what, what we can do with one part is really provide a really nice web interface that's easy to use and you can you kind of saw through the demo right we have our, our universal search as well as the filter options are, are pretty self-explanatory there's really um, you know not even much training I would think that would need to be involved it is simple to install and configure and you can index many different sources. Indexing a file system is, is very easy. When it comes to indexing a PLM or a PDM system, there's a little more configuration. And that's only because you want to choose, do I want the latest rev or what attributes do I want to bring in? Do I want to present them in a different way? Right? We can tailor a lot of that stuff. Okay, what that's going to let you do is then find, of course, your 3D assets. We saw, we saw the similar search, which is pretty nice, uh, but as well as 2D, right? We, Word documents, PDF documents. You can see the file types on the right side and some of the systems we can connect to. Okay, all of that would show up in your search results. Okay, those are all supported. They all have preview thumbnails. Um, you know, the multi-cad formats, all the document types. And really, the system doesn't care where the data is. And likewise, the users don't care where the data is, right? which, is, which is also important. The user shouldn't have to worry about that. Um, just do their search, do the work, and try to figure out you know, what, what they can reuse and what they can't reuse. All right, so that about wraps up the presentation portion. We'll take a little second here to look at the questions that might have been asked. If you do have any questions, you can ask them directly through the GoToMeeting panel, and we can address James. those now. Yeah, James, one question that did come through. Uh, can you speak? generally what it takes to set up the connector uh, to smart team oh yeah yeah definitely let me actually go and I can show you a little bit of that yeah so the connector is pretty easy to set up you have an admin console which is going to let you get in there and define these different uh, connectors and different sources James, I'm sorry to interrupt you one more time. It looks like we're still viewing your PowerPoint. If you're oh, okay, up. yeah, no, that's all right. Uh, let me see. Okay, yeah, you should have it now. Yep, thanks, Jason. Yes, I see the yeah, web interface. Mm, okay, perfect. Yeah, so we're in now. I'm in the admin console. This is also web-based. Okay, so we can see that here. And then, as far as the smart team source. You can see we have some different sources here and connectors. So really, adding a new connector is as easy as going up here to add, create a new one. We'll just do we'll just do file based, and then I'll show you Smart Team because there's a little more involved. We could even copy an existing connector. So if we already have one that's already set up, we can copy one. And then we pick a path. So this is file-based again. We can pick a path to our data. Hit accept. And essentially, we're done setting up that connector. So this is actually going to index all the files in this location. Okay, of course, we can narrow down a lot of this based on maybe the type of file you want to index. You might not want to index. Um, 
you know, email messages that are in that directory, right, if you have some junk in there. Of course, there are many more options we can do um, based on different items you want to index, different authentication, um, you know, different, different um, attributes you want to bring in, et cetera. Okay, so there's more you can do, but essentially the file, um, the file base connector is done. Okay, so I'm not actually going to finish that one. When it comes to Smart Team, you can see here what we've done is define our Smart Team connection info. Okay, so it, it does use web services. So there's a component you install on your Smart Team server. It's just a service that runs. It's actually pretty, pretty minimal. And what that lets you do is connect directly from your one part server to your Smart Team server. Okay, so really not much, <laughs> not much here. I think I don't know. That might have been Armando that asked the question. You put your database in. Uh, you need an admin login to authenticate. Notice here I'm doing latest rev only to bring those in. Okay, again, we can have multiple indexes and different users. And then, of course, you know, on top of this, we can, we can do a configuration file, which will let us specify if we only want to bring in certain attributes or certain class types. You know, it, it doesn't only index your CAD data. You can index your bill material parts, your user table. I mean, it can really bring in whatever you want um, from your Smart Team database. Um, there's a config file where we can specify, um, you know, exactly what we want to come in. And that's, I mean, that's pretty much, pretty much um, all you have to do for the basic connector to get that up and running. Any other questions? Looks like not at this time, James. Not at this time. Alrighty. Okay. Well, yeah, it looks like we're finishing up just on time. So thanks a lot for joining. Uh, really appreciate it. The webinar, as I mentioned in the beginning, is being recorded, and we'll make that available on our website as well, so you can download that for review. And as always, uh, get in touch with your account manager if you wanted to see any more of this or see it in person, be happy to uh, show you and even set it up with your data. Um, you know, like I showed, it's pretty easy to get that in there so we can show you what your data actually looks like in the system. Right. Okay, so thanks everyone and uh,